It's 3 a.m. You wake up and go to reach for a glass of water. But then you're welcome to new trauma by one of the darkest paintings in history. Think your last family get-together was a disaster? Hold my easel while I introduce you to Francisco Goya's Saturn devouring his son. This isn't your average dad eats the last piece of pie scenario. It's more like dad turns into a monster and eats his kids. Plot twist? This painting isn't just Goya cadabbling in oils. It's a deep dive into his soul, where the chaos of his era dances a macabre waltz. And the kicker? Well, it might be based on actual events in his life. Today, we'll explore both the obvious and the hidden layers of meaning in this artwork. When we look at the painting, we see Saturn, looking all shocked and hangry, as if someone just told him there was no more pizza. This isn't your usual godly vibe, but more daddy on the edge. It's like a dark fairy tale echoing Goya's own twisted life story and Spain's never-ending political horror show. Now get this, this not-so-cheery piece was one of Goya's infamous black paintings, a series he plastered onto his house walls like some kind of morbid wallpaper between 1820 and 1823. Goya, by then deaf, bought this house in 1819, and it became his canvas for unleashing his inner demons. Initially, he went for more uplifting decor, but soon his walls were screaming with haunting images reflecting the violence of the war, the terror of the Spanish Inquisition, and personal tragedies he experienced. And our guy Saturn here? He was chilling in the dining room, probably freaking out other dinner guests. Goya never even entitled these paintings. He left that to others after he bit the dust. This Saturn isn't your standard issue mythological figure. The dude's already gobbled up the head and an arm of his offspring, and he's eyeing the other arm like it's the last piece of cake. Art buffs have tossed around a bunch of ideas about what Goya was getting at here. Was it about the clash of youth and age? The inescapable jaws of time? Or maybe even a jab at the chaotic state of Spain? What's sure is that Goya never intended this for public eyeballs. Here's the twist. The painting's mood is totally out of sync with the renowned Peter Paul Rubens version of Saturn. In comparison, Goya's Saturn is bonkers with madness, not like the calculated menace of Rubens' guy. All right, let's dish about Rubens and his less cannibal chic version of Saturn. Rubens' Saturn has this polished, I'm sorry, I, I ate my kid vibe. But Goya, his Saturn is like the wild child of the art world, raw, unfiltered, and throwing caution to the wind totally owning the romantic era's obsession with all things wild and emotionally unhinged. Goya's painting is like a horror movie poster, while Rubens is more of a tragic history painting. It's like comparing a psychological thriller to a period drama. Now let's understand where Goya comes from, because it's a very dark place, darker than you think. Several tragedies marked Francisco de Goya's personal life. One of the most profound of these was the death of his children, Goya married Josefa Bayeux in 1773, and the couple had seven children together. Tragically, only one of their children, a son named Javier, survived into adulthood. The death of his children was a significant personal tragedy for Goya, adding to the various challenges he faced in his life, including his own illness, which led to deafness. But he wasn't alone in his inspiration. Goya's deafness, a result of an illness in his mid-40s, isolated him from the world, turning him introspective. Before Goya's life at this time was like a soap opera set in a haunted house. Things took a dramatic turn in 1793 when he got super sick and lost his hearing. This changed his vibe big time. His art got darker and he started to show the not-so-pretty side of society. While Spain was duking it out with Napoleon, Goya stayed in Madrid, pouring his worries and fears into his art. Think of it as his way of throwing shade at all the chaos around him. He whipped up some wild pieces like the disasters of war and black paintings, which were like spooky haunted house stuff on canvas. In his later years, Goya became the grumpy old man of the art world, living alone and getting all philosophical in his paintings. He eventually said adios to Spain and chilled in France until he passed away. Through all the drama, Goya's art just kept getting more interesting, like watching a soap opera where the main character is a genius with a paintbrush. Goya's life was really tough. He lost almost all his kids to bad luck. Despite this, he kept going because he really believed in Spain's strength. But when Goya had enough of Spain, 
he retreated to the Quinta del Sordo, which means Villa of the Deaf One in English. This notable estate and country house is located on a hill in Carabanchel, on the outskirts of Madrid. Contrary to popular belief, the name Quinta del Sordo was derived not from Goya's own deafness, but from the condition of a previous estate owner. Goya, who became deaf due to illness in 1792, purchased the house on February 27, 1819, from this deaf owner. Initially, the house comprised two main rooms, each decorated with rural motifs, before Goya's acquisition. He later added a new wing for the kitchen, and lived there until his exile to Bordeaux in 1824, leaving his 17-year-old grandson, Mariano, in charge of the estate. The house is most renowned for the 14 murals known as the black paintings that Goya painted there. So you can say that Goya's black paintings are caused not only by his deafness, but also the death of his children and the political drama in Spain. His deteriorating health and increasing disillusionment with the Spanish monarchy and society deeply influenced his artistic vision. His earlier works, marked by their elegance and social commentary, began to take a darker turn. This period coincided with the brutal Napoleonic Wars, which ravaged Spain and profoundly affected Goya. Saturn devouring his son with its raw, primal emotion was a manifestation of Goya's despair and his disillusionment with humanity. The painting, a grotesque portrayal of the mythological figure Saturn consuming his child, metaphorically echoed Goya's views on the self-destructive nature of Spanish society and its ruling class. Does it not make you wonder what role did the imposing size and the unconventional medium of oil on wall play in amplifying the emotional impact of Saturn devouring his son? Goya's masterpiece is seriously intense and kind of creepy. It's huge, like 146 by 83 centimeters. And it's not just some regular painting, it's oil on a wall. Yeah, Goya took an entire wall of his dining room and transformed it into this dark, haunting scene straight out of a nightmare. It's part of the series he did called The Black Paintings, and they're all about dark themes and loaded with heavy, somber colors. What's really wild about this painting is how Goya makes it feel like Saturn could just leap out of the wall at you. He chose oil on the wall for a reason. It let him blend the colors in this really fluid, dynamic way, making everything in the painting feel super real and even more unsettling. The whole painting screams dread and despair. It's like Goya wasn't just painting a myth. He was tapping into the deepest, darkest fears of humanity or his life. The giant size, the gloomy colors, every single bit of it is designed to freak you out. Goya's not just flexing his artistic muscles here, he's throwing shade at Spain's political mess and poking fun at societal superstitions. It's like he's using his paintbrush as a sword, dueling with the demons of his time. In Saturn devouring his son, Goya wasn't just creating art, he was making a statement. The painting can be seen as a metaphor for the self-destructive tendencies of Spanish society, with Saturn representing the devouring nature of a political power. But others believe that his rendition of Saturn devouring his son is merely a reflection of his life, the pain of losing all his sons but one, his lasting memory of how he outlived his children but one. As you contemplate the twisted tableau, remember that art isn't always about rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes it's a gut punch, a wake-up call that rattles us out of our comfort zones. In the end, this painting isn't just a visual spectacle. It's an emotional roller coaster, a plunge into the abyss that leaves an indelible mark on your psyche. Whether you're a seasoned art connoisseur or a casual observer, Goya's creation will linger in your thoughts long after you've escaped Saturn's insatiable appetite. So as you navigate the vast gallery of art, remember the lesson of Saturn devouring his son. Embrace the darkness, confront the uncomfortable, and never underestimate the power of a painting to stir the depths of your soul. Until next time, may your artistic adventures be as chilling and thought-provoking as Goya intended. Stay creepy.